Hey everyone, welcome to another Tandem Cross video. I'm Luke and today I have a very exciting new product to show you guys. So recently we released the Cornerstone Rotary Safety for the 1022 as I have on mine here. And it's had an overwhelming amount of support. Um, but in addition to that, there was also an overwhelming amount of requests for people saying we need this on the PC carbine or PC charger. And one of the many things that Tandem Cross is good at is listening to the feedback of the customers and the community and then delivering. And here it is, the Cornerstone Rotary Safety for the PC Carbine and PC Charger. I have mine in the charger and it's just amazing, man. It's, it's such a big ergonomic upgrade and I wanna go over some of the benefits of having the Rotary Safety over the Crossbolt Safety. So first things first, it's ambidextrous. You can operate it from both sides. So whether you're left-handed or right-handed, we've got you covered. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with cross bolt safeties, but there are a few features with rotary safeties, specifically ambidextrous ones, that will really help you have that ergonomic edge. So let's talk hypotheticals here. Say you're at the range and you're about to shoot a string or dump the mag or whatever you're doing, and you can easily push the cross bolt safety if you have one into the fire state with just your trigger finger, right? And then when you go after your string or after you dump the mag, you have to leave the shooting position to then take your thumb, this is gonna be hard for me to show you, and press the safety back into the safe state. Whereas with the rotary safety, you can operate it with your trigger finger, put it into fire, which is down, and then up, which is safe. And say a range officer wants to see that you're clear and safe, the indication of the safe with the lever is much easier to see than the color on the cross bolt safety from a distance and they'll love you for that. So to wrap this up, it's ambidextrous. You can operate it with one hand without leaving the shooting position. There's clear indication whether you're in the fire or safe state, uh, or if you're standing next to somebody who's shooting and you wanna see the state of the firearm, that's really helpful as well. Because it's an overall ergonomic upgrade, it really changes the experience of shooting the firearm and having centralized controls is just really, really awesome. Now that we've talked about the benefits of having the Cornerstone Rotary Safety, I do wanna mention that it comes in black or in red. And now I'm gonna kick it over to Tyler and he's gonna show you guys how easy this thing is to install and then we'll hit the range for some fun. So here we are at the installation portion of the PC Carbine Cornerstone Rotary Safety. So as far as the parts that you will be receiving in the package, we have the internal safety drum, two safety levers in your choice of color, two safety lever mounting screws, and then one T10 Torx to drive those fasteners. So for this installation, all we will need is the actual trigger housing here. Uh, you can do this while it is attached to the full PC carbine or PC charger, but it's just easier to manipulate this just as one little small unit. Depending on your stock or chassis, whether it's one of the factory Ruger options or an aftermarket uh, stock or chassis for your PC carbine or PC charger, the disassembly instructions will be slightly different. So go ahead and refer to the manual until you can pull the trigger pack off of the receiver and then you're left in this condition. One quick note, this part is very similar to the version that we make for the 1022 and 1022 charger platforms as well, but they are not exactly the same. In order to help you distinguish that, especially if you've you know, bought two or you have two disassembled, we have engraved on this flat of the safety drum a small P uh, that would be to distinguish if you are using this for a PC carbine or a PC charger. Uh, the version that is unmarked would be for 1022 base platforms. So to do this installation, we'll need to take the safety. You can see it sort of snaps at either end, either safe or fire. You will need to push the safety between safe and fire and find the midpoint just like that, where it's balanced. So you have a little bit of that original safety cylinder sticking out on either side, and then just pinch it. And we're gonna rotate it this direction, about 90 degrees or so. We don't need to go any further. So just a firm pinch. Oh, let's get it back to center. Firm pinch and twist it, and you'll feel a little bump sensation. And then if you shift the safety side to side gently, it'll just feel like a consistent uh, smooth surface that the detent is riding on. So we have detached the detent from the little track on the bottom of the safety, and we can go ahead and put in the new internal drum. So to make sure we orient this properly, you'll locate the flat. Let's face that towards the sky. If you look on the bottom side, there is a small, and let me point this out, 
there's a small little dimple right there. That will end up on the left side of the housing like so, meaning that the circular portion of the P will be facing back towards you in this orientation. So we'll go ahead, line the new drum up with the old drum, and then just push it straight through like that. And so it kicks out the old one and it just replaces like for like. At this point, you can go ahead and reassemble the firearm and then you can install your levers. But for the sake of demonstration, I'll go ahead and assemble the levers now. That'll be on each side, you'll take one of the levers and one of the little T10 fasteners with the T10 key and tighten it on down if I can find the threads. There we go. So just a quick little spin down. And then for real installation, a little drop of blue thread locker on the screws would be a pretty smart decision. But for demonstration and function testing, you can go ahead and just do a little dry fit on these for now. Okay, so this is installed and we can do a quick little overview of how it works and conduct a function test. All right, so just to run over how this works really quick, there's the safe position. The lever is impeding in the area of the trigger guard. So it acts as a very easy visual identification of the condition of the safety. So as it is on safe, pulling the trigger, I cannot get the hammer to drop. But if I sweep the safety to fire, my finger lands outside of the trigger guard, and then I can bring my trigger finger in and get the hammer to drop by pulling, as a safety would. It's a pretty easy installation. However, we should still take a little bit of time to go over the things that may go wrong and how to get you out of those situations. So let's say that for some reason you need to remove the cornerstone's drum, you can't quite do that mid position and twist action that you do to remove the original safety drum. In order to remove the drum, we have added on top of the flat surface, there is a hole and you can use a small Allen key, bent open paper clip, needle, punch, anything like that, and be able to reach down into that hole. And if you press, you'll feel that you are manipulating the spring and detent beneath the safety. So if you do that and then push your tool forward or backwards as much as you can, you can sort of deactivate the detent and get it out of the track. And now it's in that free moving position. So for sake of demonstration, I can go ahead and put the original drum right back in the same way that I put the cornerstone in. So lining it up flat towards the sky. And then I'll just give it a little bit of a push from above, push it across, there we go. So there, that goes over how to revert it back or if you need to do a serious disassembly for whatever reason, now you know how that's done. So I have the factory drum in the mid position. I've twisted it to deactivate the spring and detent. When you install this, it is important to drive this in through one continuous assertive motion so that it can clear through and then out into the other side of this housing just fine. If you sort of stop halfway, you'll get into a position where the spring and detent underneath will be pushing up on the side right here and it will be It'll have cleared through this left side, no problem, but it might not quite line up with this hole. So I'll go ahead and try to do it incorrectly to simulate what that might look like. All right, so here's that example. So if we can get in close on the camera, you can see that the spring is pushing up on the drum such that it's not lining up with this hole nice and cleanly, but you can utilize the T10 tool that we give you, push down on the drum from above like this, and then continue to, you see, ooh, nice wiggle. So there you go. Now you've sort of corrected for that issue without anything super, super weird happening.
All right, and so as a final note on things that could theoretically go wrong during installation, if you start installing the drum and then somehow pull it out and you release the spring and detent and they are on your table, fear not, it is something that can be corrected for with one of these tools, one of these gunsmither safety tools for 1022. It worked on the PC carbine and PC charger series as well. We show how to use this tool in our 1022 version of the cornerstone installation where we go in depth of a complete disassembly detail strip of the trigger housing and how to get that spring and detent back into the hole and get the safety back over it. If you need to reference that, we will be linking the Cornerstone 1022 installation video in the description of this video, so you can find it there, but you would have to install this partially and then yank it out in order for that really to occur. So have no fears, the likelihood of something like that happening, practically zero. Thank you guys for watching the video on the Cornerstone Rotary Safety for the PC Carbine and PC Charger. It's available now at www.tandemcross.com. Please make sure you guys leave a comment, like this video, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Finger guns. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video on whatever social media platform you use. I'm Luke with Tandem Cross, and we're here to make your good guns great. Keep up with us on social media for daily updates. I'll see you next time.